All right. Welcome to the KM6LYW Radio Backyard. Hey, if we're out here, that means we're testing stuff. Yeah, I, I know you guys have seen a lot of HT antenna shootouts, you know, uh, portable radio sh- uh, antenna shootouts, you know. Now that we have ham radio licenses, we're actually allowed to change the antennas on our radios. Have you noticed on the little blister pack radios how you can't change the antennas? That's the FCC rule. So since we earned the right, right, privilege to change the antennas on our HT radios, we owe it to ourselves really to get the best one. And I know you've seen a lot of HT antenna shootouts, and that's really what this is. Um, I've done some, you know, preliminary testing. I think we might find some uh, some interesting results here. So to start off with, on this radio, the FT1XDR by Yesu. This is by far my all-time favorite HT radio. If you can still find one, get it. No, don't get it because I'll probably buy it. Um, so we're going to try the, the rubber duck on this. This is a dual bander. It's about this long. Um, you know, it's a reasonable length, not too long, not too short, uh, VHF and UHF. But we're also going to test some of these longer dudes, too, like this Nagoya. I don't have my glasses on. Nagoya NA771. See how long this guy is? You know, this is a more traditional quarter wave whip. Uh, but again, it's a, uh, branded as a dual band antenna. And then we're also going to test the, uh, the, this is a similar one by Diamond. This is the Diamond, this is popular, the SRH77CA. You can read that even if you could it's upside down again kind of a longer whip yeah yeah these have some gain well we're gonna find out but you know they're not really practical i mean how do you put this on a belt you know without poking someone's eye out i don't know um and then we've got some other and more interesting ones so we've got this is a diamond look how small this guy is i mean just put him on the radio just see so for some scale look how small that guy is you're not gonna put someone's eye out with this plus you know, if you're as er- uh, you know hazard prone as I am, you know you're not going to break this antenna either because it's like a it's like a quarter wave whip, uh, completely loaded into a spring. So <laughs> this one's convenient. But uh, you know, when I bought this at Ham Radio Outlet, you know, it says, "Oh, you're going to buy a dummy load." I said, "No, well, this is an antenna." You know, it's like a dummy load, <laughs> but we're going to test it anyway. Uh, I want to make sure I read that it was the Diamond SRHF10. 10. And then uh, last and certainly not least, this is one of my favorites. This is the Signal Stuff Signal Stick. Um, the one thing that this has different, there's a couple of different things about this antenna. One, you know, you can put this, tie it in a knot basically, and put it in a shirt pocket um, and then use this all day. But if for some reason you need a lot of gain, you can go out and get this longer guy and just unfold them and you've got a quarter wave uh, and fed quarter wave right here using a Signal Stick by signal stuff and then we're going to actually modify this one a little bit in our final test this will be like the bonus round we're going to put a counterpoise onto this guy some people call these rat tails this kind of completes the antenna um, this actually turns the end fed quarter wave antenna into a center fed half wave and we're going to kind of hold it out like you know at a, at a at a low angle not really like this but more like this so we get eh, a little closer to 50 ohms of impedance there so we're going to talk about all of these antennas. Actually, we did just talk about them. We're going to test all of these antennas. I think you might be surprised. Let's see what the common denominators are. Let's see. Uh, let's, we're going to do some S meter readings. I've got the ICOM 705 uh, in the shack, and I've got like a uh, almost like a dummy load antenna. Actually, I, I have a Baofang antenna sticking out the side of it. I turned the RF gain down a little bit, but we're going to watch that S meter, okay? Watch the S meter on the radio. That's the little meter on the left side that goes, you know, don't watch the, you know, the the, the, the sexy waterfall, but watch that little S meter. You know, it's going to be between S, you know, S, well, I don't want to give away the results, S5, S10, I don't know. Check that out. That's really what we're watching. And then we're going to look at uh, how well these performed, not only on the S meter signal strength, but, you know, did they sound okay too, right? You know, was uh, is signal strength enough? Was there a lot of noise behind my signal? A lot of times if there's a lot of noise behind the signal, that'll artificially increase your S meter reading. So listen to it as well as watching the S meter. All right, let's do the test. I'll be right back. All right, this is the Yaesu FT1 stock antenna. Yaesu FT1 stock antenna. KM6 LYW radio testing. All right, up next for Nagoya fans, we've got the NA771. NA771, this is for Nagoya folks. This is KM6 LYW radio testing. All right, now we have the diamond SRH77CA. This is a long diamond with uh, KM6 
LYW Radio testing the diamond. All right, now the shortest one of the bunch, the SRHF10 by Diamond. SRHF10. This is the, the little stubby dummy load by Diamond. Let's see if this one does okay. This is KM6 LYW Radio testing. All right, now we've got the signal stick by signal stuff. The signal stick by signal stuff. Boy, this one's really flexible. Uh, this is KM6 LYW radio testing the signal stick. All right, lastly, and probably not least, is the signal stick with counterpoise. So this is the same antenna as the signal stick, and uh, I put, put a uh, about a 20-inch counterpoise on this guy. This is KM6 LYW radio testing. All right, testing is complete. I, now that we have the results here, um, I'm going to show them on the screen. But you know, I've got it on my piece of paper. So this is a hard day in the field. So the you know these are in order of the S meter, okay? And maybe they sounded some sounded good, some sounded you know worse. I don't know. Well, that's kind of the subjective measurement to this. So the FT1 XDR, the the rubber duck antenna with the radio, that came in at a 4.3. I was kind of disappointed with this because Yesu usually does a pretty good job matching these, right, um, to the radio itself. Uh, the next one was the Nagoya. Honestly, I'll be honest with you, I don't use this one that much, mostly because I bought like the Beofang N and I needed to use an adapter, but that's the only reason. And this came in at an S level of 4.9. I know they waver a little bit, but I kind of took a, an average, right? So you're going to have to have to work with me there. And then there is the, uh, the Diamond guy. This guy came in at about 5 S units on that radio. Again, I had the RF gain on the radio, so it's not super accurate. So they're kind of relative terms. The Diamond SR, SHR77CA came at 5.0 units, relative units. Then there was the uh, the little stubby guy where you can't poke your eye out with this guy. Um, he also came in 5.0. I was surprised. Um, usually when I'm using this one and transmitting, they don't hear me very well on the repeater. So take that into account. Don't count on this one being a 5.0 5.0 all the time. I was surprised that one did as well as it did. The signal stick, I'll be honest with you, I expected this one to do really well. Um, it got a 5.4. All right, these are in order of with more signal, and so you know it wasn't shockingly better than you know the other quarter wave whips. But you know what's the difference between these two? Yeah, one's thicker than the other, but why is one thicker than the other? This is a dual band antenna. This diamond antenna is a dual bander for UHF and VHF, and I think the combination of the two, you know, they work well on both VHF and UHF, but they work great on neither. Unlike the signal stick, this is strictly a VHF. A whip. This is just a single conductor in here, okay? Um, there's no UHF thing in here, there's no coil, there's no compromise from a VHF perspective. So yeah, I would expect this to do a little better. The thing that got it, that into my head was I have that Kenwood D74, that HT, it's a tri-bander, and there's three different elements, or at least three different uh, antennas inside of it, and it's, it's kind of good at 2 meters, kind of good at 1.25, kind of good at UHF, but it, it it pretty much sucks at all of them. So, you know, that, that tri-bander antenna is probably my least favorite. Um, and then, as you saw on the uh, the test here, the thing that really blew up the receiver that was just awesome was when I connected this signal stick to the radio. This gets you 5S units, but it wasn't until I put on this counterpoise. And this is just a little, uh, I don't know, quick connect and some speaker wire I got at the hardware store. This is about 20 inches. You don't want to, you want to make it a little longer than your radiating element. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why that is, but uh, you get a flatter SWR, best of, better SWR overall. So this is with the counterpoise. And I think when I was, you know, when I was testing this, it was just like this, okay? Just hanging off the side here. Now, ideally, you want to point this at the receiver if you can. If you happen to know where the repeater is, that's going to give you a little more gain in that direction. So for me, for my money, the signal stick by itself is fantastic, not only because of its portability, you know, a lot of times I can just tuck it into the radio here, um, but it also gives me the option with this counterpoise just to, uh, to make it even more amazing. Now, if I'm just walking around, let's say I'm just, you know, going for a hike in the neighborhood, honestly, I'm just going to use the little diamond, uh, SRHF10, you know, if I'm mostly listening to amateur radio, which is what we should all be doing is doing a lot of listening. 
Um, this guy is more than good enough. And there's no way you can break them, and he's pretty convenient. But if you really need to get out, you're backpacking, um, I would actually go with a signal stick. And you're, and you're not using UHF. Keep in mind, if you're not using UHF, uh, the signal stick, I think, is the winner here. It's empirically evident. Um, this has you know, been my observation you know, as I've owned these. And if you really want to kick it up a notch, add the counterpoise to the bottom of the signal stick. All right, this has been another KM6 LYW radio production. Uh, thank you for hanging out with me here in the backyard. Hey, patrons, thank you very much. Patreon.com slash KM6 LYW radio. You guys make this possible. I know we talk about the DigiPie a lot, too. Uh, you know, being a patron gets you access to early access to not only videos, but software. I happen to be a software engineer. Uh, if you want access to the DigiPie image, which is... Uh, has all of the amateur radio data modes that we talk about on this channel packed into a single SD card that you can shove into a Raspberry Pi and access all of those from a web browser. You don't need to be a, an engineer or a super geek or even understand Linux to make this work. If you have a web browser, the DigiPi image and a Raspberry Pi and a radio, you're ready for data modes. All right, hey, thanks for came, hanging out with me. This is KM6LYW Radio Craig in, well, it's not sunny, Cloudy, California, and I'm clear.